Well, I left Hungary very early, 48, as a young boy, as you said, uh, and turned around in the world uh, to get my possibility to study and work. And finally, it culminated as I came to Switzerland on the occasion of the Hungarian Revolution, 56, where I could came as refugee to Switzerland and I came to Zurich. That was 57. And well, at that time, uh, I have already known the name of the firm Contraves. And so I was very straight going uh, to apply for a job by Contraves. I have already learned at that time digital uh, systems, what called computer science. So I was able to start development of computer hardware, but also application software, mathematical basis, and so on. And I could offer this unique uh, knowledge uh, to Contravets, which was a very uh, advanced developed firm, but using only analog techniques and no digital computers until that time. Well, Contraves was founded in 1936 and it was already dedicated from the beginning to develop uh, what is called military anti-aircraft system or air defense systems, we call it in English. And that was their dedication from the beginning. And they developed finally in the late, late 40s uh, analog computer system to aim guns to fight aircraft. And these systems have become uh, not obsolete but uh, overstressed because accuracy was not sufficient for further development. And they have looking for new solutions and these new solution I could provide by using digital computer. Of course, digital computer is just the word. We needed not only the hardware of a digital computer, but we needed at Contraves also the mathematical solution of the problem. We needed to make our own computer because hardware computer on the, on the market was not available for military purpose which has to work, for example, between minus 40 degrees Celsius up to 75 degrees Celsius, very wide environmental conditions, uh, very hard resistance, and this kind of equipment was not available. IBM was a very nice computer for commercial application, but uh, for military use, it was not intended. It uh, could not work uh, without uh, large cooling uh, equipment. Uh, each computing center, is a central part of it, is the conditioning, the air conditioning, cooling and heating system, a large part. And for military application, it is impossible to start up with cooling. All the equipment has to work just switching on cold as it is outside, and the equipment is cold, switch on and work. And this kind of equipment was not available, not from IBM, not from control data, from nobody else. So we have to develop our own hard environment uh, computer system, the hardware. Sure, sure, it is a very important point of view you mentioned, sure. We, besides the technical viewpoint of the wide temperature, then the small size also, because an IBM computer is usually quite large, and our computer has to uh, occupy small space like that, all the computer, and presently it is not uh, new, because presently, of course, you can have a, in a laptop computer a lot of computing power in small size. But at that time, in the 50s, beginning of 50s, computer has been huge and filling rooms in the size and not 
it is size about for a field. Field use has to be small, the unit, and not so big. So, but also politically, we could not depend on IBM and make in Switzerland a military product for our Swiss army, but also for foreign, for NATO countries, and so using something uh, coming from USA, and maybe they stop to deliver it for some reason because there is a new, new model available. We could not uh, deliver our equipment. I told that we cannot use a computer which is uh, perhaps available a few years and then stop producing it at the IBM and we cannot depend. That's the point. If we are uh, developing a computer system, not the computer itself only, the computer system and a complete military equipment, then we start the development of the hardware. It takes a few years until we arrive at the state where we have a computer which can be used in field and we develop mathematical uh, algorithms for for example, for air defense system, we are programming it, we are preparing a product. It takes about six years, for example, uh, from the beginning until we can start sale this equipment. But if somebody is going to buy a military equipment like a rifle, a gun, he is not going to buy it for present only, but he has to be able to use it and be serviced tens of years. So normally we have been uh, used to it to be able 20 years to uh, supply replacement parts, for example, in the hardware, a plug-in unit containing integrated circuits or whatever, which has to be able to use, uh, to, uh, to, to supply a replacement, same kind of board after 20 years. Mm -hmm. A product has a very, very long life in the military business. Yes, well, uh, besides that, the Contraves has uh, the main line uh, was always air defense system, military equipment, but at the very first uh, computer system we developed the Cora One, we have then uh, also developed a civil application, the Choragraph. It is a drawing machine uh, who is able to uh, calculate and draw very precisely lines, curves, or complex uh, pictures. For example, the original of complicated printed circuit boards too, or cadastral plans, or a, a cart, just uh, country size cards, everything. So this kind of driving machine uh, was a very interesting application for our first generation of computer, Cora One. This was a transistorized computer. At the very early time, in end of the 50s, there had been already some transistors available, but not many of them and developing a computer based on this transistor was something very new. So we have uh, started uh, to uh, calculate our circuits called CODISIM, uh, which has a system basically as binding blocks for computer. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. A printed circuit board, standardized size, which contains logic, or negation circuits, amplifiers, flip-flops for storing a bit. So these basic circuits have been developed and then we developed the Cora One computer. It was a 24-bit computer system based on Neumann, for Neumann, sign, uh, his, his ideas. Uh, Neumann idea was quite, the basic idea was very simple. He has stated that the computer has to have a central storage unit. And in this storage unit, there will be data stored, but also program stored. And there is no difference, basically, between data and between commands, programs, because 
commands can be also changed and calculated by the computer like any other data. So they are variable like any other digital data. So a common uh, storing for data and program, that was uh, the characteristic for the Naiman machine. So we have developed a 24-bit machine. The beginning was a relatively small core memory size. It was a limitation. At that time, uh, core memory affordable was about the size of 16 kilo, just a second, 16 kilo bytes. So that was very small. Today it is lovely. This is <laughs> nothing. We are, we are talking about uh, gigabytes and terabytes, and that time 16 kilobytes was about the upper limit. Well, uh, programming a computer on the level of machine language is very boring. It is just like uh, counting the bits. And uh, is, uh, we cannot find anybody who will do it professionally all the time. Machine language is only for the computer itself. He is understanding nothing else but the machine language. Although the very modern uh, laptop computer or whatever, inside there are finally machine commands, and these commands are in machine language. But programming is done in other higher level language. And the very first thing we have done for the Cora computer system, uh, avoid programming in machine language. So we have at Contraves in the computing center a nice uh, IBM computer, uh, IBM uh, 1620, a very particular interesting machine. And uh, the first thing I started, I made a cross assembler mm -hmm. for this IBM machine. So we could program in so-called assembler language, which is already a symbolic language using the variable x, y, z, mm -hmm. x1, x2 expressions just as we describe in the mathematic an equation. And we could uh, uh, use the command add or subt or multiply. Index, indexes from uh, a variable which is uh, a string then. So all that was very easily written, the program in assembler language. And that was then translated, cross-translated in this IBM center computing center in Contraves into machine language for the Coravan computer. Unfortunately, not, uh, at least not as, as uh, finished uh, engineers as today called informatiker. This name was not yet created at that time. We have been speaking about uh, very early 60, perhaps. The first uh, choreograph um, is early 60 produced. At that time, there was no name informatiker known. So we have just to, to take young engineers uh, who could not finish the study getting machine or electrical engineer, but already has a good basic knowledge, mathematics and physics. We took them and sent them to IBM. We have been very glad to have IBM in the background, yes. So we sent them to IBM in an assembly language course, learning programming in assembly language. And this assembly uh, language uh, course was about two weeks. After two weeks, we got, not informatiker, but, but we got programmers. And these programmer people have started to learn to uh, express themselves in this language, so solution given by some other mathematicians. The mathematical solution of the problem, he was translating them in assembly language uh, to a computer program. In the ETH, it was, of course, a, a very high value first step 
in the direction of introducing computer technology in the study program uh, in the Institute of ETH. It was a first step, and they could not teach something which they don't know. So they have to learn, first of all, what is computer, how it works. And they have developed their own computer, Hermet. Uh, it was a very nice instrument, particularly uh, for education, or teaching, engineering. Programming, well, I believe that the first time, the very first programs for these Hermet was written by different professors on the ETH. <laughs> and not by informatica anyway, but also not by programmers. The programmers, they have the same way as we, just take some young people who have a basic knowledge of mathematics and logic can be teached, and they learn them how to program the computer. But the ETH, the Hermet, was not so much uh, only for just learning building computer, but they were serving as a computer center, mm -hmm. uh, carrying out calculation for all the faculties. So they have, of course, each of these faculty has to show how to develop their own programs. Well, it was the very first uh, opportunity for Contraves to show that we are doing something new and that we are uh, in the position to develop computer, which is very new, and very few places in Europe uh, have been able to do that. And so the first application, which was not a military application, besides that the Contraves has always the main stream and the goal to develop uh, air defense system. The name Contraves is Contra Aves against the bird. We have been developing a system to defend ourselves against flying objects, airplanes or guided missiles. But besides this mainstream, we have very early derived an industrial uh, version the Cora One computer and applied it for uh, pre high precisely driving machines called Coragraph. And the first of the Coragraph uh, units has been uh, exposed in the uh, Expo 64 in Lausanne. It was very interesting because uh, the people have been working and they have seen uh, about one meter thin by one meter thin plotting table drawing table. I don't know whether you can see it here. <laughs> this plotting table was manufactured by Hagen Streit in Bern, and we adopted it uh, together with all the necessary interfaces with our computer to make drawings. So this table was in the front of the uh, people. They can see it, but no computer was seen there. But behind the co this table was a concrete wall, and behind the wall was the Cora computer, the Cora One computer. The reason why they put it behind the wall, because our public relation people has been afraid to confront the people with a product controlled by computer. Computer is something unknown, something very complicated, something Terrific. And the people, many people, not all of course, but many people have been terrified by computer. I, they didn't understand it, they couldn't accept it, they are afraid of it. If they have to buy something, a choreograph, and there's a computer inside, oh no, I, I, I don't know what to do with a computer. <laughs> yeah? So it was a product we call just before its time. It was too early, the product. So they put and concealed the computer behind the wall. But not much later, not much later, we have sailed the first uh, choreograph units, one happily on the Epilosan, where it was used for cartography, 
And if I remember right, it was Professor Bachmann who has uh, advanced this project. And the second one was in Vienna for the central office of car for cataster plans, drawing all the cataster drawings plans for all Austria, changing by division of parcels of, of uh, properties or uh, designing of streets or whatever. There was always new changing and uh, new planes to draw. And that was very nice <coughs> to do it by the computer. <coughs> so we have, in the same time, sold two pieces of choreograph, one at Vienna and the other to Lausanne. We have produced about 60 pieces, I think. And most of them was choreographed, not all of them. There have been many other applications too, very interesting ones. But to say from choreograph application, it was a, one of the very nice application where we have um, entered a very new field because uh, these drawings have to be very precise but sometimes are curved included. And physically, this drawing is done by mechanical system, drawing table and drawing head, engraving or drawing by uh, tint or whatever, it was moving ahead and it had a mass. And of course, this mass in a curve is supposed to have some forces on its centripetal and centrifugal forces. And so the drawing would not be accurate because it was always drawing beside the line we wanted. Mm -hmm. So what the first thing we have to do to calculate the derivates in the computer of the data, derivates and calculating the forces exerted on the drawing head and compensate it exactly. So we have been uh, producing curves up to third order curves, and all these curves have been drawn with a precision of 10 micron, 100 millimeter. Yes, there have been some plotters. For example, the table we used from Hardenstreit <coughs> was already existing with a punch card reader together, and it has positioned a tool just to make a pinpoint on that coordinate, and then it has been driven by the next card to the other coordinate, and pinpointing it too, making a small hole in the paper, but no drawing. That was only coordinate pointing out, and it was used already for cataster plans, but the drawing was made manually. Mm -hmm. And then some plotters have existed, computer-driven plotters. But plotters and drawing is different level. So comparable to, uh, to the choreograph uh, was not existing at that time, at, li at least not our knowledge. I have done I have no um, studies made in the States or Japan or uh, United Kingdom what comparable could exist. But according to my knowledge and the literature I have seen, there was no system known for us of uh, a similar kind. Yeah, sure. And uh, I am sure that uh, many uh, other products have learned of it, yes. Yes. And at the beginning, we have learned to ourselves. Uh, I wanted to mention here, also to answer your question, the first few units delivered, one of them to Lausanne, other to Vienna. Our service department was not yet established and not yet introduced in the technology. So we didn't, didn't have service people to install this equipment and put it to work. So, well, uh, what we have to do? Uh, Mr. Todd developed the system. Okay, Mr. Todd, please go and install it. And <laughs> so, so you know, I had a very nice chance to install it in Lausanne, 
a very nice chance. By the way, there's a story. You know, I am full with stories. Old people have always a lot of stories. So I'm getting old. So the story, I installed in Vienna, and I was working in uh, the, uh, the way to the, by on the office, and I see the chief that was uh, Hofrat, it's a high educated, Hofrat, and I, the name is very well known. That was my uncle. I didn't know that a part of my family that I know, part of my family is coming from Austria, from Wien, from the time of mm-hmm. Austro-Hungarian uh, monarchy. Yeah? <clears throat> so one of part of the family is Austria. But I didn't know that he is there and he was the chief of this office. I am going to install my first computer there. Mm-hmm. Life is producing very interesting uh, coincidences. Some, very few, because the service department has become established, uh-huh. and they, I lost all the further. Support. I know that one of them have been used uh, to make the drawings for a big construction site in Zurich, Escherwies Platz Hard uh, Bridge. Uh, there was a huge construction project, and uh, a choreograph was used to produce the drawings for it. I know, or the other was 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 for. Um, VBZ, uh, public transportation in Zurich, was a computer, not a choreograph, but one computer used to control the radio connection to the different uh, trains and buses. Yes, the Cora one has been what is called classically a discrete transistor diode logic. Transistors from a Texas Instrument, a very nice transistor. We have been standardized and used hundreds and thousands of them. A core of one diode logic, that means that all the logical combination and or combination, logic combination, was by, realized by diode and discrete diodes. And we have used small glass envelope diodes, 8,000 about, in one core of one computer and I don't know, about few thousand transistors too. And that was, of course, very big. It was very nice to study on this Cora computer how to solve the main problem for Contraves, that is air defense, coming back to that point, yeah? The air defense system for fire control equipment it's a field equipment, military field equipment. The computer has to be not a big uh, place, but a small unit. It has to uh, be much more powerful, more computation per second. In the Cora one, we have used a clocking frequency of one megacycle. So one microsecond, step to step, was going on. It is not enough to solve uh, complicated real-time dynamical problems. We wanted to go further on. So the next generation of the computer was um, integrated circuit using. Integrated circuits with chips, small uh, ceramic chips. It is just the second generation then, and that was the Cora 2. Cora 2 was already about this size. Cora 1 one addition took six microseconds. So it means about uh, 150,000 addition per second. At that, at that time it was very nice, but <laughs> today it is nothing. Today we are not speaking more in microseconds, but nanoseconds. And so the Cora 2 was about 12 times faster. Uh, well, because the space in such a field equipment is very limited. You cannot, uh, if you are going to put up a battery of uh, anti-aircraft gunnery, maybe three guns and one control unit, it contains the radar. 
tracking the target. It contains an operating desk to decide is the target uh, to be fighted against or it is my friend or whatever, and gives free for firing. But in this uh, operating desk, on the back of it, is just a part only the computer. Mm -hmm. And this unit is about four meter long, three meter high, two meter wide, on four wheels, mobile. It can be towed by a track and pulled in the field in position. But in this huge uh, tar, it is only that space for the computer. So it has to be smaller. So the Cora 2 generation has fulfilled these requirements. And so we could <coughs> realize what we took uh, as a dream in 57. It was a dream as I came to Contraves. Uh, I promised to Dr. Lottman, who was the technical director, I promised him that we are going to make digital fire control system controlled by digital computer by our own hardware, which is available for military purpose. Okay, and this has been fulfilled by the Cora 2. And we could produce a system called Sky Guard, defending the sky. Yes, it is standard equipment in many countries. It is uh, now becoming quite old. Skyguard has been produced now for about, what to say, 20, 30 years. That is a long time ago. Uh, and yes, about 30 years. So I thought that uh, 20 years is a usual lifetime in the field of a military product, besides the developing phase and manufacturing. The very first Cora 1 <coughs> was not really usable for military equipment, but it served uh, as a study computer, uh, and we could derive already knowledge. We have used the Cora 1, the very first laboratory uh, experimental computer, Cora 1, uh, to simulate solution for the uh, gunnery, for the fire control. But we know that it is not uh, the computer we are going to use it in the final equipment. We could simulate it. So the Cora 2 has been the step to realize it. As I came in 57, <coughs> 1957 in Zurich to Contraves, uh, Dr. Lattmann was the technical director and his very own uh, development work resulted in the first generation of fire control system with analog computers. He has developed analog computers and it was very interesting and a very sophisticated technical system. And the first talk with Dr. Lottmann, he told that, Mr. Todd, you think you are going to use a digital computer to solve better in the future the fire control problem. But I, I am grown up with analog computers and he told it is for him something so new he, he don't understand how to solve the problem with it. But, he told, Mr. Todd, you think you can solve the problem? Okay. I trust you, and you go on and do what you think correct. I trust you and give you all the chance. Also, if I, Dr. Lottman, don't understand what you are going to do. And this greatness of personality, I never forget. Dr. Lottman is now over 100 years. Last year he has the 100th uh, birthday. He's living in Switzerland, over 100 years old. But I, I never forget him, this greatness that he told. I don't know, I don't understand. But please, go on and do what you think is the future. And I think that if I am the father of the Cora computer, that he is the grandfather. Without him, 
I don't think that we could achieve this big step.